Hey everybody, it's Lauren Delisa Coleman here with Filmio's Inside Series, and I am so excited to bring you this next block of wonderful filmmaker interviews, editor interviews, producer interviews. We've got everybody for you here. We are live, boots on the ground, here at Tribeca Film Festival, and we are shooting this from the wonderful Roxy Hotel, which is just a stone throw from Tribeca Film Festival headquarters at Spring Place. I have with me now So Yun Um, who is the filmmaker, director, producer behind Liquor Store Dreams. There's a huge buzz on this film at the festival. We are really lucky to snag her. Um, and this is her first film, and I just want to welcome you and thank you so much for taking the time. She's making all the rounds with her PR people. Um, so, so, can you um, start out, we always ask, by um, having our filmmakers give a synopsis of the film. So can you tell us a little bit about what Liquor Store Dreams is all about? Well, thank you so much for having me. This is my pleasure. Such a treat. Uh, Liquor Store Dreams is about two second generation Korean American children of liquor store owners in the greater Los Angeles area. And we kind of trace, uh, ba tracing back to the 92 LA uprising to the current BLM movement and how there is generational divides within, within us and our parents. And so these are a lot of the, a lot of the stories that we're trying to explore. I love how. Um you've brought this together, because maybe for people who, who don't know, there has, I don't know if always, but for a long time, there's been a tension between the black community mm -hmm. and the Korean community. Um, the Korean community is very entrepreneurial, I guess, so one would say they own are owning liquor stores, all the beauty stores where mm -hmm. all the girls are, are there, you know, buying their hair, et cetera, et cetera. But there has been, um, a large misunderstanding, I guess, because there's a different way of conducting business in Korea, maybe not smiling, etc. So it's just created this whole tension, and I love how you've captured that within the like kind of microcosm mm -hmm. or macrocosm of the tension within the family. Sure. So talk to me a little bit about how um, really the whole concept came to you. Mm -hmm. Well, I think as a liquor store baby, I grew up in my dad's liquor store for many, many years, and I knew that I was. Wait, felt, but is liquor store baby like a term? I we think love we're this. We're making it a term. Okay, let's we're go for it. it we love this. Yeah, and I think I, I always felt there's something in this place that I felt unexplored and that I haven't seen, and something that I felt the need to do. And um, I think I made a short film called Liquor Store Babies, which was about me and my dad and I think because of such good reception we were like people asked oh make it a feature length and I said okay well if I'm gonna make it a feature length I want to cover everything I want to cover the history where we come from and like where we are now because I don't think it's worth telling just a snippet of our experience without telling the entire story you can't really understand yeah the whole yeah. kind of ecosystem and so it was really hard for us to figure out how do we cram everything in one film but also make it feel like fun accessible and i think we did an like amazing job and we we explore such complex themes mm -hmm. with a lot of balance and i'm really glad that we're able to make such a profound film that really caters to a lot of people and speaks to all of like just all of america um i think that's a really great way to put it i'm i wrote down you know just some of um I don't know what I just found really impressive about you, and I'm wondering if you can speak to it a little bit. First of all, you are a recipient of a Sundance grant. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about how that, that came to be and um, the impact of that on this film. For sure. I honestly, we started out with a vision. We started with nothing. Like, I crowdfunded it, and I really just, like, had a mission to create this film. And after applying to grants for, like, three-plus years, we were rejected from everything. Mm -hmm. And to, to us... And like Sundance was the first organization and, and institution that really believed in us, believed in our story and gave us a yes to like fund our film. And it gave us such a great push and urgency. And it meant, it meant the world just to have their support and the way their, their funds that helped us get to where we are now. And so it, they've been so instrumental in our progress and how the film was shaped to be what it is today. And I think too, you make a really good point about someone like, or rather an organization or an institution like a Sundance coming in and saying, we believe in you, right? Mm -hmm. It's not really just like the financial scenario, but it's that stamp of For approval. Sure. How did you keep, um, I don't know, just like your, your persistence and like, you know, the vibe up 
over that long time because of course we have a lot of you know filmmakers watching this and I always like to ask mm -hmm. you know for tips because yeah a lot of this stuff takes a long yeah. time to pull off yeah. I mean sometimes I'm talking to filmmakers who have been like at it for eight or nine years and you're like what made you like keep going I don't know how people go on for that long. I, I just knew that I didn't want to go past certain years. So I had like a mission that I want to do it within four years. We're going to premiere it in 2022. And I think for us, it was, we had such a bigger vision beyond just us that we, we just kept going and going despite all the rejections. I think for me, I don't mind the rejections as mm. long as I keep going and improving because I like I actually got rejected from Sun the Sundance Doc Grant um, three times prior. And for me, I think every time apply every time I reapplied, I just try to get better and better and better. And re and then they got to a point where they really understood what I was going for. And I think that's what they're hoping to see in filmmakers. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot. More so clarity. you're refining refining mm -hmm. the idea. Mm -hmm. So it's so cool though that you were able to look at it that that way as opposed to like defeated. Although maybe we were defeated at first, but then you were like, you come back even yeah. stronger and mm -hmm. harder. And I think that that's really, it's important. And I think a good like kind of tip to share. Talk to me though a little bit about the actual filming of the the project mm -hmm. in general and, and what it was like to kind of have the parent vibe as well oh, with this, yeah. right? Because it's not like, Oh, just out of the blue, right? Yeah. It kind of has to do with, with them too. So speak to me a little bit about, I guess, how you were able to balance. I always feel like, especially my parents, they think filmmaking is silly. And so they, they think it's just for fun and I'm just doing it. So we were able to capture a lot of raw moments where they're like, hey, when are you going to stop filming? Or when are you going to get married? Or like little comments that they'll make on the daily. But I was able to capture it all on camera. And I think the most difficult part is having these tough conversations with my parents about race in America, our roles as Asian Americans, how we fit in. And I think those were topics I've never really talked about with my parents, even off camera. And so even with having the camera did make it slightly easier just because I always feel like the camera is our mediator. It's there to keep us in check in a lot of ways, but also to give us the safe space to have these tough conversations. So it was really rewarding, tough, but rewarding to like actually go through and like talk to my dad and yeah it's it's I feel like it's been such a great journey to get to know them in that way interesting how long did it take you to actually shoot this project we started in 2018 with a short film and I think we 2019 so about three years of just like so but just but for the feature itself though for about how long years. like how many how many days were you on set or weeks um, I think we shot in total like less than 40 days okay sporadically and then we edited for two plus years so we just kept going at it. So tell me a little bit about applying to Tribeca and then what it was like to get that yes. Oh my god uh, we applied several times in a sense where I kept You were it. like the queen of persistence so I, I love have this. to be persistent. I'm this. nothing if not persistent because to me rejections are just not right now. It's not a fully no, it's just not right now. So I think the first time we applied to Tribeca, I think the programmer came back to us, like, show us another cut. And then I said, okay. And then I did. And I think the, we, the, what, the final version is slightly different, like almost better than what we showed them when we got approved. But it was just a life-changing moment just because we were working so hard Everything we were working for led up to this moment. And when they, they called me, they're like, you're in. I like have it on camera. I was like so mind blown that they really understood everything we were going for. And like for such a LA movie, I'm glad that we were able to come to Tribeca, be in New York and show it to like a New York audience. Right. Okay, so tell me what the parents said though. Are you I a little bit more validated now with them? For or, or sure. Okay. I mean, I think they now understand like how big it is. I think they come. They came to the Tribeca world premiere yesterday. Did they? That was going yeah. to be my next question. Oh my god! They came and I think they were like, oh, we, you know, um, they're just so overwhelmed by all the cameras and questions and people being able to relate to them. Yeah. Whereas I feel back at home in LA, 
in their own liquor store, they're very insular. insular. They don't know how important showing your ex own experiences. Yes. And so I think they finally and understood. And it might also be cultural too, mm -hmm. right? Because America, there's no more like, you know, America, which is about, you know, putting your voice out yeah. there and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just so glad that you could have that experience with them. That must have been really nice. Was, and I was going to ask you, how was all of like the hoopla around the premiere and everything? It was amazing. I'm glad that a lot of my friends and family were able to show up. And I saw a lot of strangers who were like, how did you guys hear about this movie, for one? But I... No, but I, it's like buzz on your movie, so like it's not a joke, huh? Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited. All three shows are sold out, and now they just added a fourth one because it's backed by popular demand, so I'm really excited. I'm like oh really honored. Oh my gosh, we're so that... glad to like get her on like the Inside Series. Because I don't know, there was just something about it. As soon as I just even saw like the still, mm -hmm. and it was like... The, it just something about it's just really compelling and I felt like it was going to be different from the other mm -hmm. kinds of stories that may deal with the Korean sure. XYZ yeah. store in LA and there's a problem with the black community mm -hmm. this was was different and maybe it was because it was a fem from a For female sure. perspective yeah. or brought in family I don't know but I was just like I don't even want to read that much about it I just want to see it like yeah, and just yeah. like really get into it so you're here this is the first time you've been at the festival yes, yes. so what do you think about it and what are you excited to see oh my god so many things I as a cinephile like I watch everything and I'm Unfortunately, like, there's just not enough time. There's like a hundred films. And I feel like it's even bigger. Like it's after bigger the pandemic, better, yeah. like they came back with like a vengeance where I feel like it's like two times the amount of all content. Mm -hmm. So you just want it to be like longer or something. Yeah, I'm, I, but I've been hearing a lot about subject and body parts, which I'm really excited to watch. And so, um, yeah, I, I can't wait to see it. Just like explore and it's my first time here, so I'm, at Tribeca, so I want to really take in this experience because right. you only premiere your first film once. Yeah. And so... Uh, that is just so great. great. So you are a member of what's called the Black Girls um, Doc Mafia as well as the Asian American Documentary mm -hmm. Network. Tell me just a little bit about those because I love like the names and just the concept. Yeah, uh, two organizations that are doc oriented. Brown Girls Doc Mafia is a group of POC documentary filmmakers, editors, ev anybody across in the documentary field as well as the Asian American uh, documentary field. And so these two groups have been so vital to helping me, amplifying me, supporting me through my entire journey. I feel like we don't have enough resources as POCs where we we are e either financially supported or just, uh, I feel like everything has been really community powered. And so these people have been so instrumental to helping me become a better filmmaker, guiding me through the process. And so they're on Facebook. I was going to say, are they on social in case anybody yeah. watching is, is you know, interested? Because I had not heard of, yeah. about this before until they're amazing. You know, I did my research there's and like prepped on you. Over so. like 5,000 members. And so there's so many people across America with varying backgrounds and skills. And so we're always able to connect and ask each other questions. Nice. And so it's been really great. So what do you want audiences to take away from mm -hmm. this film most? Because obviously there are many different layers, sure. right? So what do you want really people to, to kind of ponder maybe mm -hmm. once they leave the theater? I think I, f I for sure, I feel like media always tells one, one story and I always wanted to tell something that is actually more factual to life. Mm -hmm. When people say that the Korean black conflict exists, I don't think it's so much. I think it's a lot of the media that has been pushing this narrative, whereas there's actually so much more solidarity, so much more love that we've seen and yet we're, we're never shown that on screen and we continue this, this notion of, oh, there's so much conflict here and I feel that's not actually true and so I wanted to make a film really encapsulating our community solidarity and how, how we can like survive in this world together because we have nothing if not each other. And I think, um, I just really want to make a very compassionate film that not judged our parents for their opinions or anybody else, but just created a safe space where we all have a little bit more understanding of the other person's experience. I love that. So after all this now, what is gonna be next, so? I mean, how a do you outdo of, yourself? I know, that's what I was saying, but I, I wanna go back to narrative, and I think because this, this film has been so amazing and hit 
like the the response has been so strong that I do want to I always want to make very difficult films but in a very fun and accessible way so I hope to continue to do that I hope I continue to uh, explore current American experiences mm -hmm. and stories and uh, hopefully I mean I would really like to direct television in any capacity. I feel like it's a different medium and um, I really want to continue to challenge myself. Love it. So now how can everybody keep up with either what you're doing or what's going to happen next with the film? Do you have a site for the film? Yeah, liquorstoredreams.com. Okay. We're all on social, social media. Like and is it I all am, Liquor Store Dreams? Yeah. Instagram, etc. Mm -hmm. so it's all the same, right? Yeah. Okay, consistent. Wonderful. Yeah, please keep in touch with us. Absolutely. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Thank you so much for having me. This was amazing. And thank you for being great. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> thank you for taking the time because it's first kind of thing in the morning here. And so for all of us, after whatever events were last night, whatever, it's like, you know, a lot going on. So I want to thank you thank as you well. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for watching. Definitely click on the very next interview. We have really the inside scoop for you, no pun intended, or maybe pun intended, like nobody else. I am Lauren Delisa Coleman for the Inside Series here at Filmio.